the gospel of mark the preaching ministry of jesus introduction in mark 1 verses 14 and 15 we read of the beginning of jesus's public ministry in galilee which followed the imprisonment of john the baptist mark 6 verses 17 and 18 which began at capernaum on the edge of the sea of galilee matthew 4 verse 13 his public ministry involved preaching preaching the gospel of the kingdom of god mark 1 verse 14 the word preach greek crux means to herald to proclaim mark 1 verses 14 and 15 now after john was taken into custody jesus came into galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of god and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of god is at hand repent and believe in the gospel jesus preached the kingdom of god what is the kingdom of god that kingdom of god foretold in the book of daniel a kingdom which shall never be destroyed daniel two verse forty four a kingdom along with glory and dominion given to the son of man daniel seven verses thirteen and fourteen the kingdom of god involves four interrelated concepts god's kingship rule or recognized sovereignty the term kingdom as used by the jews often stressed the abstract idea of rule or dominion not a geographical area surrounded by physical boundaries basileia royal power kingship dominion rule not to be confused with an actual kingdom but rather the right or authority to rule over a kingdom Thayer. this rule of god is spiritual in nature it is not a physical kingdom john eighteen verse thirty six but one that is spiritual romans fourteen verse seventeen its visible manifestation today is in the form of the lord's church for the church is that community of souls in whose hearts god is sovereign that the church constitutes the kingdom of god on earth consider the term church and kingdom used interchangeably matthew sixteen verse eighteen comments made to those who were in the church colossians one verse thirteen and first thessalonians two verse twelve the description of those in the churches of asia revelation one verses four six and nine it has a future element as well as a present one the future aspect as spoken of by jesus matthew twenty five verse thirty four future aspect is spoken of by paul first corinthians fifteen verse fifty and second timothy four verse eighteen the future aspect is spoken of by peter second peter one verses ten and eleven thus the kingdom of god is both present and future in the present sense it is found wherever the sovereignty of god is accepted in the hearts of men it is a spiritual kingdom for god rules in the hearts of men its outward manifestation today is the lord's church this rule or kingdom of god was inaugurated on the day of pentecost acts two in the future sense the rule or kingdom of god will be culminated with the coming of the lord it will involve that new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells described by peter and john second peter three verses ten through thirteen and revelation twenty one through twenty two it will be experienced only by those in the church who are submitting to god's will today matthew seven verses twenty one through twenty three and second peter three verses thirteen and fourteen the kingdom of god involves good news gospel does the kingdom of god need to be proclaimed today most certainly philip preached the things concerning the kingdom of god in acts eight verse twelve the apostle paul in his preaching and teaching spoke of the challenges in entering the kingdom in its future sense 
Acts 14, verse 22. Reasoned and persuaded with people concerning the kingdom. Acts 19, verse 8. Had gone among the Ephesians preaching the kingdom of God. Acts 20, verse 25. Solemnly testified of the kingdom of God to the Jews in Rome. Acts chapter 28, verses 23 and 30 and 31. In his epistles, Paul wrote of the nature of the kingdom. Romans 14, verse 17. Those who will not inherit the kingdom. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 and 10. Galatians 5, verse 21. In Ephesians 5, verse 5. Jesus giving the kingdom to God when he returns. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 24 through 26. How flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. How we are in the kingdom now. Colossians 1, verse 13. His companions as fellow workers for the kingdom. Colossians 4, verse 11. How we might be counted worthy of the kingdom. 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 5. God calling us into His kingdom and glory. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 12. Jesus judging us at His appearing and His kingdom. 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. The Lord preserving Him for His heavenly kingdom. 2 Timothy 4, verse 18. Hebrews refers to our receiving a kingdom which can't be shaken. Hebrews 12, verse 28. James described the faithful poor as heirs of the kingdom. James 2, verse 5. Peter wrote how we might have an abundant entrance into the everlasting kingdom. 2 Peter 1, verses 10 and 11. John was a brother and companion in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Revelation 1, verse 9. Yet, there is an important difference in our message today. John the Baptist, Jesus, his disciples in the limited commission, all proclaimed the kingdom at hand, drawing near. For the rule of God, as foretold by the prophets, was about to be manifested. Mark 1, verses 14 and 15, Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, and Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. During Jesus' earthly ministry, that kingdom, reign, was yet future. That was the good news, gospel of the kingdom then. It was near. After the ascension of Christ, the preaching of the kingdom proclaimed it both present and future. The rule of God is now being fully manifested through Jesus Christ. Matthew 28, verse 18. Ephesians 1, verses 20 through 22, 1 Peter 3, verse 22. Those who gladly receive the message are added by the Lord Himself to His church or kingdom, the community of believers who submit to His authority. Acts 2, verses 36 through 41, and verse 47. Colossians 1, verse 13. Revelation 1, verse 9. Those who persevere to the end inherit the heavenly and everlasting kingdom of our Lord. Acts 14, verse 22, 2 Peter 1, verses 10 and 11. This is the good news, the gospel of the kingdom today. It is both now and coming. Conclusion Thus, the preaching ministry of Jesus involved proclaiming the kingdom of God. The coming rule or reign of God, as proclaimed by prophets like Daniel, was now at hand for the time is fulfilled. But Jesus did more than just announce the coming of the kingdom of God. He called on people to repent. He called on people to believe. Mark 1 verse 15 We will examine his call for repentance and faith in our next study. In the meantime, we do well to ask ourselves, Are we in the kingdom of God today? 
The answer lies in whether we submit to the rule of God now manifested in the person of Jesus Christ. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. This concludes the Gospel of Mark, the Preaching Ministry of Jesus, Part 1, a PowerPoint study created by Gospel Outreach Association from Executable Outlines with permission from Mark A. Copeland.